What's going on everybody, it's Delmar and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'd like to show you the brand new Leap Motion Controller 2, which was recently released by Ultra Leap. This device, to be honest, blew my mind after testing it with a few demos and also learning that it can be used for more than AR and VR, which we're going to be talking about today. But first, let's take a look at the updated specs on the Leap 2. This device has an increased tracking range. It is now 110 centimeters versus 80 centimeters from its previous gen, which means that we can now get further away from the camera and the hand tracking will still be stable. Also an increase of field of view, which is now 160 versus 150, lower power consumption of 25% less versus the previous gen, which I feel this is due to newer cameras. And I noticed that the IR cameras look a bit more pixelated on the Leap 2 than the one on the stereo IR170, which may be the reason why there was a power optimization. In addition, I noticed that an improvement on the camera frame rate, which was hitting a pretty high number versus the previous stereo version. I ran a comparison with the stereo IR 170 and this new version seemed to perform a lot better as well. This device is also very tiny, 30% smaller as you can see from the image display as well, as how it compares with the stereo IR170, which is another device that I've been using to test this new Ultra Leap device. Unfortunately, I didn't have the Leap 1 to run comparisons against, but the stereo IR170 should give you an idea of some of the differences. The Gemini software, which is what you use to test your Leap 2, is compatible with Windows, Android for XR2, and I was amazed that it also supports macOS, including Intel, Core i7, Apple M1, Apple M2, which means that you will be getting a download for an Intel and silicon installer based on your requirements. As far as like the extra devices that we can attach these to, we can do these on the Pico, we can do it on the HTC, Vario devices, Quest 2, and they also provide support for PC VR headsets, desktop applications, and also holographic displays. I was surprised that the pricing is 139, which to me sounds like a great entry point. You can also find the previous generation going from 113 to 129.99 on different retailers. So a few more dollars and you can get this brand new device is a no-brainer to me. Next, let's talk about the Ultra Leap XR headset mount before I show you what came in the box when I got all this equipment. So the headset mount is very compact as well. And I love that I can basically get the device in and out by basically just rotating it. This mount allows you to have a downward tilt angle of 15 degrees, which is what they recommend. It includes a USB-C cable, which is 22 centimeters, which is the perfect length to connect it to your preferred VR device. As far as pricing, this is $19 and it's also available on different approved retailers. As far as development, they have different plugins, one for Unity, also one for Unreal. They also support MRTK, which is really cool and really powerful. And lastly, you can also use the touch-free components, which they have it also available for Unity and also for the web. As far as like use cases for these device, you can use these with enterprise XR applications such as training and simulation. 
also gaming and interactive entertainment. They also provide interactions with objects, menus, 3D displays, holograms and projections, so many use cases around those. Music, there's also examples on 3D MIDI control with 3D audio mixing, robotics, including telepresence, robotic controls, AI-assisted teaching, and a lot more. Well, that's a wrap up of the Ultralib new Leap Motion Controller 2. Also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And if this video sounded interesting, let me know below. And I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Thanks everyone. And if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.